Luke chapter number 24. We're going to read while we're celebrating today. The Bible says in verse number 1, Now upon the first day of the week, by the way, that's why we worship on Sunday. The Jews worshiped on the Sabbath, Saturday. But we worship on Sunday because uh, that's the day the Lord got up out of the grave. And upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna the, and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto their apostles. And their words seemed to be, or seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the hope we have today, the blessed hope. Lord, because you proved you was God when you got up out of the grave. Lord, you proved once again it's impossible for God to lie. And God, you said you're coming back for your church. So we have hope today. We have life and eternal life because you conquered death. God, we have victory because you conquered the grave. And God, we have hope because you live within. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about this place. Lord, I realize that the devil likes nothing more than to distract and disrupt people from hearing the truth. So I pray for the next few minutes you'd bind the powers of hell. And I pray that you'd settle in amongst us and you'd speak to our hearts. Now, Lord, I realize that Many throughout the week have been busy and preparing for the holiday, and many have been caught up in the hustle and bustle of the holiday. And folks even have had their minds taken away from the true meaning of the holiday with a collection of eggs and Easter bunnies and all kinds of things. But Lord, I pray for the next few minutes, your presence would be so real and your truth would be so impactful that, Lord, you could not be denied. Now, Father, you know everybody here today. It is by no accident or chance that we are assembled. And God, you knew who would be here. You know what we stand in need of. You know every heart. And Lord, I pray you'd speak to hearts. God, I don't know anybody's heart. Lord, I don't even know my own heart. Lord, I just know you. And Lord, I fear there may be some in here that have known you, but they're not where they should be. And Lord, I fear even more that there's some here today that do not know you. So I pray for the next few minutes and that, Lord, you would reveal unto them yourself. And Lord, I pray you do a work in our hearts. Lord, we pray for Miss Betty, you would touch her. We pray for Brother Thad, you'd touch him. God, we also pray for Brother Rod in his upcoming surgery. Lord, thank you for touching Miss Lexi. Lord, a blessing to see her today. Lord, got a smile on her face. Lord, been through something terrible, but Lord, she's glad to be in church. What a blessing. Lord, we're thankful for Brother Bob and Miss Sherry being here today, and others, we're thankful for every visitor. Now, Father, more importantly, we're thankful you're here today. So help us. We'll bless you for it. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to look at this text and see what the Word of God is saying to us. We find in verse number 1, there is the remorseful. We find that Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, these women have went to the tomb to give Jesus a proper burial. 
You see, Jesus uh, hung on a cross, uh, and it was getting close to the Passover time, and it was close to holiday time for the Jews, uh, and they had a law. No man could uh, hang on the cross during the Passover time. Uh, and Jesus, when he gave up the ghost, uh, and he died on the cross, uh, uh, they did not have time to give him a proper burial. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went and begged for the body of Jesus and Pilate even marveled that he died so soon. It normally took a man about three or four days to die on a cross. Jesus just hung there for a few hours, satisfied the wrath of God for you and I, and he gave up the ghost and gave his life for our sin. And can I say this? Uh, they gave Joseph of Arimathea the body. They wrapped him in grave clothes and they threw him in that grave. Uh, but here's some ladies that are remorseful. Jesus meant so much to them. They wanted to give him a proper burial. We find in verse number one, it says that they, had, they were bringing, certain, uh, bringing spices uh, uh, that they had prepared and they'd come to give Jesus a burial. Hmm. Some of you look like you came for a funeral today. Hmm? Uh, then what they found was that there had been a resurrection. Uh, maybe today you'll get resurrected. Uh, verse number 2 says, And they found a stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Huh? And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed uh, thereabout, behold, two men stood by them shining garments. Lord sent two angels. Well, look what the angels said unto them. Uh, and they were afraid. They bowed down their faces to the earth. And the angels said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he's risen. Hmm? Aren't you glad we serve a risen Savior? There's a, there's a lot of people serve a fellow by the name of Buddha. He's still in the tomb. A lot of people worship in Muhammad. They go back to Mecca every year. He's still in the tomb. Uh, there's a lot of people worshiping statues and idols of stone and wood uh, that cannot hear nor speak. Uh, but friends, I'm not serving a dead Jew today. I'm serving a risen Savior. Uh, the darling Son of God came into this world uh, uh, through the birth canal of a virgin uh, to become the sacrificial lamb for our sins. Uh, he lived a sinless life. Uh, took his cross up Calvary's mountain, uh, uh, bled and died for our sins, was buried and rose again. Uh, I'm glad for resurrection. I'm glad that he is alive today. Uh, say, preacher, how do you know? I'm going to give you some accounts from the scripture, uh, but I know because I met him 50 years ago. Uh, he changed my life. Uh, he took up a residence in my heart and life. Uh, I've already talked with him today. Uh, hey, I know him, uh, and I I'm glad he knows me. Uh, the Bible says this, the great apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, and verse number 3, uh, he said, For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh, that which I also received. I just told you, uh, 50 years ago, I received Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, what I'm telling you is what I know, what I've experienced. Uh, that's what Paul said back uh, 2,000 years ago. And he goes on to say this, uh, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, uh, and that he was buried, uh, and that he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures, uh, and that he was seen of Cephas, uh, then of the twelve. Uh, after that, he was seen of above, above 500 brethren at once. Uh, uh, can I say that over 500 people uh, had eyewitness accounts. Uh, they saw him. They heard him. Uh, they were around him. Uh, he was no longer in the grave. He had risen from the dead. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, which according to his abundant mercy uh, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope uh, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, in Revelation chapter number 1, uh, uh, the great apostle, the apostle known as uh, the one whom Jesus loved, uh, uh, John is uh, exiled to the Isle of Patmos uh, because he loved the Lord and because he preached the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the resurrection of the Lord. Uh, John is on the Isle uh, uh, they sent him out there to die alone. Uh, what they did not know, there was one on the aisle waiting for him. Uh, you say, who is he? Uh, his name was Jesus. Uh, and listen to what Jesus uh, 
personally says to John on the Isle of Patmos, uh, Revelation 1 and verse 17, uh, John said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, uh, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, uh, I am the first and the last. Uh, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Uh, and have the keys of hell and death. Uh, uh, friend, when he resurrected, uh, he'd conquered death. Uh, he'd conquered hell. Uh, he'd conquered sin. Uh, uh, today he has the keys to death and hell. Uh, what a blessing to know the devil don't even have the keys to his own house because uh, Jesus done conquered it all. Uh, thanks be unto God for the resurrection. Mm -mm. If he did not raise from the dead, we, have, we have all, of all men are most miserable. Everything we do is in vain. And if Jesus wouldn't have resurrected and, done, and did what he said he would do, friend, every one of us would have to die and go to hell. Now that's not popular. I heard one of these liberal feel-good churches this week's not going to mention resurrection, not going to mention Christ, not going to mention the blood, not going to mention hell, not going to mention anything to offend people. Well, can I help you with something today? Truth hurts sometimes. And what this world don't want to deal with is truth. We have politicians tell you America's just fine. America's hurting. America's in a mess. And we're in a mess because people turn their back on God. Uh, thanks be unto God, we can find help in God. Amen. Jesus resurrected from the dead. And he did so, so he could redeem you from your sin. Amen. We find the remorse, the remorseful, the resurrection. But notice, if you will, the remembrance. The angels also told those ladies, he said, Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified, and the third day rise again. The Bible says, And they remembered his words. Can I say, Jesus had prophesied to his disciples over and over again, even the very night that they came to take him to go try him and crucify him. He told them on the third day he'd rise again and see them in Galilee. But yet, they didn't remember his words. Do you know why the Lord gave us the Bible? So we could never forget. We can always go back to the Bible and it always tells us the same thing. Truth. Hmm. There are people that put their faith in all kinds of things today, including preachers. Friends, you better put your faith in what God says. Say, preacher, how do you know you're saved? Because the Bible told me how to get saved, and when I did that, Jesus saved me. Say, preacher, how do you know that you're going to heaven? Because the Bible tells me I'm going to heaven. Preacher, how do you know some people are going to go to hell? Because the Bible says if they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, they're going to die and go to hell. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, the Bible says. I can remember what Jesus said because Jesus penned down what he said for us. What a blessing. And then we find the rehearsing. These ladies went back and they told the disciples what they, what they saw, what they experienced. Look at verse number 9. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the leaven and to all the rest. Hmm. They were excited. They told them. Hmm. Just like I'm telling you today, I'm saved. But if you're not saved, that don't mean much to you. But I'm going to tell you, it means the world and then some to me. Because hmm? I've been changed. Passed from death unto life. Uh, I have eternal life. Do you? You can. But notice, if you will, the reservation. In verse 11, the Bible says, And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Brother Ron, I fear that there may be some here today as I'm talking about the resurrection, talking about being born again, talking about the hope I have to them. It just seems as idle tales. And they don't believe it. Brother Clint, I, I've been where they, they're sitting. You know, I'd heard it and heard it and heard it. I just didn't believe it. I didn't disbelieve it, but I didn't believe it. 
just idle tales. It amazes me how much of our culture denies the Bible, but yet you'll see ads with Noah's Ark. You'll see ads dealing with Daniel and the lion's den. It's just stories to them. It's not reality to them. And there's a lot of folks that it just seems like idle tales, Brother Doug. And they believe them not. I want to preach on this thought with God's help this morning. And I've already preached longer than I'm going to preach, so you can take a little exhale right there. I want to preach on the sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief. The Bible said in verse number 11, and the words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. You know the only sin that will send somebody to hell is the sin of unbelief. Hmm? The Bible says this in Hebrews 3.12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart, be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, and in, and in departing from the living God. Can I say when we do not believe what God said, and do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our heart is evil towards God. In Hebrews 4, 6, the Bible says, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter, the, enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Can I say the Bible said, Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. Can I say there are people that even Jesus preached to, and they believed not, and they died and went to hell because of the sin of unbelief. Can I say the only way we can enter into heaven is through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But can I say some things about the sin of unbelief? It's a denying sin. Some of you are having an argument in your head right now. Your argument's not with me, you think it is. But something inside of you is saying, you need to pay attention, this preacher's trying to help you. But then there's something else saying, uh, I don't believe that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to just trust in the fact that I've been baptized. Or I'm a member of a church. Or that I'm a good person. And there are all kinds of things floating through your head trying to justify you not believing in what I'm saying. Can I say again, your argument's not with me. You see, the Lord's trying to speak some truth to you, but your own flesh, your own pride, and the spirit of Antichrist from the devil has you bound in unbelief and they don't want you to be unbound. The key that will unbind you is the truth of the scriptures and they're fighting real hard today for you not to listen. You see the sin of unbelief is a denying sin. I'll just deny what they're saying. Oh I believe in God. I believe that he came as a babe Christmas time oh I believe he was raised from the dead that's good enough for me oh it takes a little more than that see by not believing in fully the gospel you're denying it all Mark 16 14 says afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat now in verse 11 here we find that they don't believe it well, we find in Mark's account, he shows up a little later, and he's eating with them. And then it says, And he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. You see, if you don't believe them and their testimony that saw him and heard him and sat with him, you see, he says you have hardness of heart too. In Mark 10, 33, this is what Jesus said. But whoso shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. 
You see, unbelief is a denying sin. It causes you to deny the Lord here. And he said, whosoever denies him here, he'll deny them before his Father which is in heaven. The sin of unbelief is a denying sin. Can I say it's a damaging sin? Matthew 13, 58, the Bible says, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. You know why the Lord doesn't do works in your life? Because of unbelief. Because the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. What pleases him is belief. Trusting in him. Believing what God said. When we don't do that, my dear friends, he doesn't do many mighty works in our life. The Bible says in Romans eleven twenty, well, because of unbelief they were broken off. Can I say today the Jews are still God's chosen people, but he does not bless them because of their unbelief. You know who he blesses? Old Gentile hillbilly dogs like us who have believed on him. Amen. Folks that have put their faith and trust in him. You see, Israel's the true, true vine of God. But Jesus grafted in a branch in the vine called the church. Those that believe on the Lord, we got the blessings of God. Those that didn't, the Jews, they've been broken off. Hmm? The sin of unbelief, it's a denying sin, it's a damaging sin. Can I say it's a disdainful sin? Romans 1, the Bible says, verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to become, be wise, they became fools. Can I say the Bible says we can look at everything God created and know there's a God? Hmm? Colonel, when God formed man out of the dust of the earth and he breathed in man the breath of life, man became a living soul. The very conscience of man knows there's a God. That's why you can go to the deepest, darkest regions of this world and you'll find they're worshiping something. They just don't know what to worship until they hear the truth. And see, so many people have become uh, caught up and bought into the philosophy that you can become whatever you want to be and you control your destiny and you, you are in charge and all this good stuff that through your vain imagination your foolish heart's been darkened. And so people worship all kinds of stuff. They worship ball teams. They worship old Ford trucks. Uh, you're welcome, huh? Uh, they worship all kinds of things, not knowing what they worship. They say, what, what are you talking about? Anything that you love more than you love God becomes your idol. And there are people worshiping all kinds of things. Hallelujah, we're going to have revival. Got you on the front row. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, I just about had a heart skip a beat there. What I'm trying to say is every day that we enjoy God's creation and we do not recognize that it came from God and we deny Him, we're, it's very disdainful to God. Hmm? Now listen, all three of my kids know that they are welcome to anything I got. There's one thing they've got to ask for the keys, but they're welcome to anything that I got. They know they can come any time, day or night, and go through the cupboards, get whatever they want. There's no restrictions. I don't know how many times Miss Ned and I already be in bed watching a movie and my door open up and he shows up in uniform. I wanted some mama's cooking or something. I don't know, huh? That's okay. Can I say this? They can have that anytime they want it, Brother Ron, but they better appreciate it and not take it for granted. Hmm? Our problem is, is we enjoy all the bounty of God, but when we have unbelief in our heart, we don't give Him the credit and the gratitude He deserves. Huh? You know God makes every sunrise, every sunset, you know, God feeds the grasshoppers and the worms and, and he feeds the birds and he feeds uh, 
uh, cows that get big and fat so I can enjoy a steak. I mean, God, He does all that in creation. He takes care. He goes to every funeral of every sparrow. He's never missed a thing. Uh, he's in control of it all. And all He asks from us is to believe Him and respect Him. Hmm? Uh, he went so far as to do all that, Miss Pam, and he went a little farther. He said, I'm going to love that gal who's from Illinois, raised in Stanton, don't know anything. She don't know if she's a Yankee or if she's a rebel. She don't know. But I love her. And she's going to die in her sin, but I'm going to go to Calvary so she don't have to. Uh, he made all this, and then he made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins. But when we have the sin of unbelief, it's very disdainful to God. Hmm? He gives breath to your body. You know, people say, well, God, He didn't do this for me. He didn't do that for me. He lets you breathe. Hmm? I wonder what our life would be like if God just cut off our air supply for about three minutes. We'd be brain dead. Huh? God did give you the strength to get out of bed this morning. God, God did have, have enough means to you to give you gas for your car, gave you a car, gave you a place to live. You're not under a bridge somewhere. God's been pretty good to you. Huh? You only are living in the greatest country in the world. She's, she's not as good as she's been, but can I say she's still the greatest? Huh? I, I'll be in a, in a place. I was there last year. I'll be in a place here in, in a couple months uh, where I'm talking about they worship the devil where we're going to take the gospel. And I've seen what true peril really is. Friends, we got it pretty good. Uh, and all God wants us to do is believe on Him and show Him the reverence He deserves. Can I say that the sin of unbelief is a defining sin? John said in John 20, verse number 24, But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, uh, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. This is one of the disciples. He wasn't there when Jesus had supper with them. And when he shows up, they tell him, We've seen the Lord. Now the women have already told him. The other have already told him, We've seen the Lord. Uh, and he is so... Uh, 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 bent on the sin of unbelief. He says, lest I can put my finger in his nail prints in his hands, uh, thrust my hand inside. He said, I will not believe. Therefore, he is defined as doubting Thomas. You can't think of Thomas without thinking about him doubting. Now, I don't know. He might have done a great work for God, but we don't know that. All we know him as is doubting Thomas. Now, later, the Lord does appear to him and said, go ahead and thrust your hand in. And Thomas bows and he repents before the Lord. Can I say? He is defined by his unbelief. The Bible says in Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I've heard people say, well, if God just appeared in the sky... If God just did this, if God just did that, I would believe in God. If God would just answer my prayer, I'd believe in God. God said there's only one way you can believe in Him. Take Him at His word. Right. The just shall live by faith. Right. Hmm? The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Can I say God wants us to believe in Him because we choose to? If he appeared in the sky, everybody would believe in him, but that don't mean they'd trust in him. A lot of people say, well, if God answered all my prayers, I'd believe in him. It don't work that way. You've got to believe in him, then God will start answering your prayers. But most of your prayers are consumed on your lust. Listen, if God just uh, blessed everybody that believed on him with all the perks... If everybody drove a Bentley and everybody lived in a mansion, and everybody, then everybody would want to be a Christian for the perks. But you know what really impacts people is the folks that have the hardness in their life and they still choose to believe in the Lord, live for Jesus. 
Uh, they said, there must be something to it. And I say, we're defined by unbelief. And the only way to break unbelief is by believing, by faith. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Can I say, salvation's of the Lord. He offers it freely as a gift. Many get Easter presents. Hmm? Ella Rose got a bunch waiting on her when we get to the house. Huh? All she's got to do is bat them baby blues and open that thing up and there it's hers. Huh? Can I say, all we have to do to receive salvation is just do that. Receive it by faith. Believe the Lord will save us. We say this, I'll be done. The sin of unbelief is a damning sin. Romans 11.32 says, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief. Hebrews 3, 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Verse 19 of Hebrews 3 says, So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief is a damning sin. Listen, salvation's easy. Man makes it hard. Man says you've got to join a church. Man says you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Salvation's simple. In order to... Be have salvation, you must realize you don't have it. It's what we call you've got to realize you're lost. Realize that everything you're trusting in will not take you to heaven. The only thing that will take you to heaven is Jesus. He made a way. He paid your sin debt. You've got to believe on Him. My question is, do you believe? Say, I do believe, preacher. Well, I'm not talking about do you believe with your head. Do you believe in your heart? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. See, people believe in the Lord. They believed he came as a babe. They believed he died on the cross. They believed that he raised from the dead. They believe in him. But in order to be saved, you've got to believe on him. You say, what does that mean? That means you've got to realize you're lost. And the only way you can be saved is he has to save you. And you ask him to save you. Because the Bible says this. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's a fellow asked the disciples, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Today, the sin of unbelief is taking multitudes to an eternity. That one second there, they'll wish that they had another chance. And by the way, everybody that dies and goes to hell, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They even worship Him. They confess He is Lord of Lords. But they just do it too late. My dear friend, I appreciate you going through all the trouble, getting dressed, getting dressed up, fighting traffic, fighting the rain, coming to church on Easter Sunday sitting here listening to the youth choir 
listening to the special singing and tolerating me spitting and slobbering all over the place as I tried to preach to you. But I did tell you the truth. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Jesus will save your soul. You must believe on him. The sin of unbelief has you bound, but Jesus can break the chains. And if the Son have set you free, you're free indeed. Jesus can change your life. The real question is, will you be changed? Will you let Jesus save your soul and give you a better life here and in the life to come? Because that's why he came, to save you and to save me. He came seeking to save that which is lost. Do you know him today? You can. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation just a fancy term for the fact we're going to invite you to come to Jesus we're not inviting you to come to me not inviting you to come to the Emmanuel Baptist Church we're inviting you to come to Jesus and if you'll accept him as Lord and Savior he'll change your life say preacher I don't know what to do I don't know how to be saved if you come we'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved you can be saved today by believing on the Lord if you're here today and you're saved but it's been a while since you've really spent time with him. You have a relationship with him, but your fellowship's broken. Why don't you get back in fellowship with him? He misses your fellowship. He misses that time he used to spend with you. If you're here today and you're saved, you're in fellowship with him, are you revived? Do you have that glow about you like you once did? Why don't you get in the altar and ask God to revive you? Do something in your heart and life that help impact somebody else's heart and life the real question is if you're here today and you're not saved will you be saved today will you allow Jesus to break the chains of sin in your life so you can be a child of God oh he longs for it this church longs to see you saved you must choose to be saved let's all stand brother Clint come get a song brother Daniel come to the piano while they're picking out a song of invitation, some are coming to pray. If you're here today and not saved, why don't you come? Let us introduce you to Jesus. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. It's through the Word of God we know that you framed the worlds. It's through the Word of God we know that you came, you bled and died, was buried, and rose again according to the Scriptures. Through the Word of God, we realize that we could be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I don't, as I said earlier, don't know anybody's heart, but I fear there may be some in our midst today who are unsaved. Lord, they may be good moral people. Lord, they may be, uh, believe in you, but they've just never believed on you. Lord, they may even want to believe on you, but don't know how. I pray the sweet Spirit of God would woo to an altar of repentance where they'll just believe on the Lord. God, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. I pray for the saints of God, you'd revive them. Do in our midst and we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.